Hi, this is Tony Preston. I'm here today to review the venous sinus drain technique. Uh, this video is intended for um, practitioners uh, for review who have been properly trained as craniosacral therapists and understand uh, contraindications and cautions and um, basic craniosacral technique. Um, if you're not one of those people, then uh, this video might be interesting to watch to see uh, this craniosacral technique, but please don't attempt it unless you're trained. Um, a little bit of review before we start this. Um, you should take your integrative craniosacral manual, um, go through the section on the overview of anatomy and physiology, and uh, review the basic uh, landmarks that you'll need during this technique. After you've done that, um, you should go through and review the section on uh, the physiology of flexion as we'll palpate craniosacral motility uh, several times during uh, this technique. Um, also review the reciprocal tension membranes, um, where they attach to the vault, where they attach to each other, and especially Sutherland's fulcrum here, um, where the fox and tent come together, um, where the great cerebral vein enters the uh, venous sinuses. Review the venous sinuses as well. Uh, go through there and understand their anatomical structure and how they work. Um, after that, uh, open your book to the venous sinus drain technique and set that aside on a stool. You'll need a real person. Um, I'm going to use a plastic model here so that you can see landmarks, uh, but you really need to practice this on multiple people. Um, heads vary quite a bit in their motility, um, in their shape and size, in their distortions, and so um, this needs to be practiced on a number of different people. Before we start with this technique, We'll first need to go through and adjust our sensitivity just a little bit. We can do that by palpating craniosacral motility. Um, take the EOP, this bump here, and place it into these knuckles on your hand so that the person's head rests on your hand, that your fingertips are on the lateral angle of the occiput, and your uh, thumb pad is on the other lateral angle of the occiput. Settle in and feel for craniosacral motility. Follow the EOP as it goes into flexion, midpoint, extension, midpoint, flexion, midpoint. Uh, follow that through a couple of cycles. After you've done that, take your other hand and place it on the parietal bones um, near their widest point. Uh, apply enough pressure to where you can go through the skin and contact uh, the bone, but without really pressing into the bone. Stay here and monitor craniosacral motility also. Feel for external rotation of the cranium as the EOP uh, moves inferiorly and as it moves superiorly, internal rotation of the cranium. This technique can often take uh, 30 minutes, 45 minutes to do if it's done thoroughly with multiple releases on each one, uh, on each step. Um, so settle in to take time with this and uh, be in a place where you can pause this video as we go through this. The first step in this technique is to Take your fingertips and lay them here along the superior nuchal line, which runs from the EOP over toward Asterion. So I'll take my middle fingers here and place them on the superior nuchal line. I will um, wait uh, as I gently press uh, toward the center of the cranium. I'll wait for a release. Maybe even go for a couple of barriers here if I'm doing this more thoroughly. Uh, once I've released this, I will uh, palpate craniosacral motility through at least one cycle. 
After that, I'm going to move to the inferior nuchal line with both of my fingers. I'm going to press gently toward the center of the cranium and I'm going to wait for at least one barrier. Sometimes I'll release several barriers. And after I've released the, at the inferior nuchal line, I'm going to palpate at least one cycle of craniosacral motility. In the next step, I'm going to take a finger and place it from asterion toward the frame and magnum on both sides. I'm going to gently press toward the center of the cranium and wait for a release or several releases. After I've gotten my release, I will again palpate at least one cycle of craniosacral motility. In the next step, I'm going to place my little finger near the EOP and take my fingertips and place them along the superior nuchal line until I get out toward asterion. I'll do that on both sides and I will take my thumbs and place them on the sagittal suture. And I'm going to take all of these uh, contacts that I have on the cranium and I'm going to gently press them all toward Sutherland's fulcrum. Uh, this is a subtler release and oftentimes uh, cranial therapists uh, apply too much pressure or become too hurried in this. Uh, there's just a little bit of uh, gentle pressure inward and I wait for a release or maybe multiple releases. Once I've gotten those releases, I'm again going to palpate at least one cycle of craniosacral motility. In the next step, I'm going to take my thumbs here at obelion, just in, here's lambda, this little flat section here on the sagittal suture above lambda is obelion, and I'm going to um, gently distract the sagittal suture, wait for that to soften and release, palpate a cycle, of craniosacral motility. Move up a little bit. Gently distract again. After I distract, I'm going to palpate at least one cycle of craniosacral motility. And I'm going to continue to work my way up the sagittal suture until I get to bregma here. Once I get to bregma, I'm going to do my final release and my final palpation of craniosacral motility for that section. In the last step of venous sinus drain, I'm going to place my fingertips along the frontal bone just lateral to the mid-sagittal line where the falx attaches internally. I'm going to gently distract my fingers apart and wait for a softening. Oftentimes when this releases, uh, the person on the table uh, has their sinuses open and they feel clearer um, and more relaxed at the same time. Once I've gotten this release, I'm going to then again palpate at least one cycle of craniosacral motility. That's all of the venous sinus drain technique. Afterwards, I would go through and uh, do some of the things that are suggested um, for post technique in the manual, zygomatic decompression, other facial releases, functional organization of the cranium, that sort of stuff. This is Tony Preston. If you'd like to reach me, you can uh, email me at preston.lmt at gmail.com. Or you can find out more information about me uh, by Googling me and finding me on my LinkedIn page or at ashamassage.com.